All right, so let's see if we can play around with these ideas of uh, trying to find some of these null spaces and column spaces and uh, null spaces uh, for a matrix. I think I said null spaces twice there. All right, so we want to first figure out uh, A is representing some sort of linear transformation. We want to figure out what sort of spaces it's going to and from. So the idea here is we've got A times some x equals some output b. And so we know that A is a four by five matrix. And so the inputs are going to have to be five by one because we need to match the outputs here. And the outside dimensions here are going to define what this output is. The input is a five by one, the output is a four by one. So it's mapping from a five dimensional space to a four dimensional space. So the column space is going to be our set of potential outputs. So we want to know if it's a subset of subspace of R4. So since it's coming going to a four dimensional space and that's the thing we're looking at, then this is going to be something that is true. However, when we're looking at the null space, the null space is a subspace of the domain. And so the main here is an R5, not R4. So this is going to be something that is false. Now we want to go ahead and use the matrix and its reduced row echelon form to find the dimension of the column space and the null space. So for the column space, the leading the columns with leading ones are going to tell us what our uh, vectors is to form our spanning set for our basis for the column space. So here, since we have three leading ones, the dimension of the column space is going to be three. Now, what this does tell us is the dimension of the null space, but what we do have is the rank nullity theorem, which says the dimension of the domain equals the rank plus nullity. Now what we do know is that the domain, the domain is five dimensional and the rank we just said was three dimensional. So if we wanna take three plus the nullity and that equals five, what that's gonna tell us is that the nullity equals which columns uh, of this matrix are going to form a basis for the column space of it. So here we've got the reduced row echelon form over here. Now we said that we want to go ahead and use the first three columns. These all have leading ones. And so the first three will work. However, it turns out, and we didn't really get into this too much, any three columns will be fine. We just need to have three of them. Because what could have happened is we could have taken these columns, if we had switched the order of them, uh, the big thing that'll happen is just the reduced row echelon form will actually be the same. Um, and so it won't too much matter which three columns we pick. So in all of our examples so far, we've used the first three. The truth of the matter is any three columns will do. All right, so a couple more questions. Uh, the column space of a matrix A is the set of vectors uh, that can be created by taking all linear combinations of the columns. So this is a little bit, these last three are a little bit trickier. Um, is the vector negative four, 12 in the column space of this matrix? So we wanna know, or we wanna ask, answer the question, if I took alpha one, times one three plus alpha two times two six, is that equal to negative four twelve? 
So the column space is going to be the question of can we satisfy this linear combination? So these next two are going to ask about uh, some slightly different linear combinations. So we want to know kind of which of these is the best answer here. So if we wanted to solve this system, what we would do is we would take 1, 2, negative 4, 3, 6, 12. We would find its reduced row echelon form. So if we do that, let's make a matrix. We want it to be two rows, three columns. One, two, negative four, three, six, twelve. We will then go ahead and get the reduced row echelon form of A, and we get one, two, zero, 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 one. So in the end, there's no solution for this problem. So we can't find any alphas or betas such that this linear combination ends up working. So let's talk about then the row space. So the row space uh, is asking the question of which of these vectors can be created by taking the linear combinations of the rows. So now we want to know things are going to be alpha 1 times 1, 2 plus alpha 2 times 3, 6. We want to know that for each of the following vectors. We want to know that for negative 2, 4. We want to know that for 4, 8. And we want to know it for 0, 0. Well, we know 0, 0 is going to work, right? because we should be able to just take and multiply each of these by zero and we'll get that. So that'll be fine. So we just need to check for these two. So these equations are actually going to be one, three, and two, six. So alpha one plus three alpha two equals negative two and al two alpha two plus six alpha two, or two alpha one plus six alpha two equals four. So we just need to augment on whatever is the potential vector we're looking for, either negative two, four, or four, eight. So let's go ahead and check. Get our matrix. We'll get one, three, we'll start off with negative two, and then two, six, and four. So now we've got our matrix A, we want the reduced row echelon form, and that gives us no solution. So this first one will not work, but we can try our second one. So now let's try, let's try editing this matrix. So we got the same first row and second row. We just need to change this to a four and this to an eight. Now getting the reduced row echelon form, we actually get infinitely many solutions. So this, vector is a potential um, thing in the row space as well. So more than one of the above will work. All right, last but not least, we want to know which of these counts as the column space of this matrix. Uh, so we have multiple options here. We have the set of all linear combinations of the columns of A. Well, that is true. Uh, these next two, though, so a line in R2, well, it would need to be a uh, line is only something that goes with uh, one dimension, so we need to make sure that this is one dimension. And the last is set of all multiples of the vector 1, 3. Well, what we found is that we end up getting an infinite number of solutions, and so actually all of the above end up being true.